Well, in our wonderful day in the Lord broadcast, as we're looking at the great good news of all Jesus Christ has done for us and what he's planned for us, we're finally working our way to the eternal kingdom. We're in Revelation chapter 20 right now, uh, or 21 actually, and we're looking at what the Lord has planned for us, his people, for all eternity. The Lord has a kingdom set up for us. Chapter 20 and 21 of Revelation is the primary passage in the Bible that talks about this. And so we're going to look at a few passages as to what that looks like. What, what does God have planned for us? This is all part of the good news. In verse 1, we find that, that, uh, that there's a new heaven and a new earth. He said, I saw, John said, I knew heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there's no longer any sea. So we have, first of all, that there, that, that there is a heaven and there's an earth, but it's new. Some believe that the present heaven and earth are totally destroyed and uh, replaced with a new creation of a new heaven and earth. Others believe that the present heaven and earth will be refurbished. Uh, they'll be regenerated, uh, so to speak, and changed and purified. Uh, and so that even though they still exist in, uh, as, as a present entity, they're totally changed uh, and purified. And so I think good, uh, good students of Scripture line up on both of those positions. <clears throat> so, but we do know that this is a new heaven and a new earth. Verse 21, or verse 2, and he saw a new, a new city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adored for her husband. Now, we know back in John chapter 14, verse 3, the Lord promised his apostles that he was going away and he's going to prepare a place for them and so that they could come and be with him. And I think this is what he's talking about. I think the New Jerusalem is that place that the Lord promised to prepare for the saints. And so you and I will get to reside uh, forever in what the Lord has prepared for us and perhaps is still preparing for us. What a glorious place that must be uh, when we think that the Lord is doing that. So a new Jerusalem, and it's in verse 3, And I heard a loud voice uh, from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. I think the primary feature here is that uh, God is going to be among men. He's going to be with us. Uh, the Lord is not going to be up there and we're going to be down here. Uh, he's going to be with us. And so the new Jerusalem comes to the earth, the new earth. And there the Lord uh, is among us. He, he's, he will be with us on that new uh, earth, uh, ruling us from Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. And we will be with him forever. That's the primary feature of, be, of eternal life. Being with the Lord forever and ever is not just the, uh, the wonderful things he's preparing, as marvelous as that has to be, but also that we have the privilege of uh, being with him and he among us. So that's, that's the eternal life. But we can, we can move on over for a few more verses here and look at verses 5 to 7 just to get a glimpse of what life will be like with the Lord. It says, And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, write, for these things are faithful and true. So he sits on the throne, and he is saying, I'm making all things new. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. That's a reference usually to Christ, who is uh, earlier in the book of Revelation. is called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. He said, the beginning and the end, and I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of water of life without cost. And so there is a per perfect satisfaction. And not just physically, I think our, our physical needs would be per perfectly satisfied, but also the spiritual needs. We, we often think of the passages in the Psalms that talks about our thirsting for, for Christ or for God. And that, that thirst for him will be satisfied. Uh, and he will give to us a spring of water of life without cost. We're not going to pay for this. We're not going to earn or merit this. This is something given to us as a gift of God. It's part of the good news, part of the gospel. And then it says in verse 7, And he who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. So the overcomers here, and the overcomers are those who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ and been given his righteousness and his forgiveness and these people 
will be with him forever and he will be our God and and he will be I will be his God and he will be my son this family relationship this perfect relationship with God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit forever and ever that's going to be the joy of eternity whatever else the Lord has planned for us and I'm sure it's going to be absolutely marvelous the great joy is being with him forever and ever what a wonderful day that will be